Can you further explain how I count my steps? I don't uh, quite understand. Uh, all right. So here's the biggest thing, guys. Depth is the most overrated coaching point for wide receivers. I don't. If I'm a quarterback coach, I'm an offensive coordinator. I don't care how deep you get. I care about timing. If you're thinking about like getting to a yardage point, you're thinking about yo, I got to get to 12 yards and turn around, or I got like that. All that does is cripple you and, and make you shorten your stride and make you slow down so you can appease the coach and get to where he told you to go, so he doesn't yell at you. When you start counting steps, right? When you start look, worrying about instead of worrying about getting to 12 yards and turning around, you start saying I'm going to false accelerate on my fourth outside step. Now you're worried about maximizing that break point, right? Your mind's in a better place. It's not about getting to a spot so the coach doesn't yell at you. It's about getting fucking open. That's the name of the game is getting open, right? So here it is. So my inside foot's up, right? These are my two feet. I'm running a 14-yard comeback. It's one, two, three. And now this next one, I'm snap one, two, and I'm driving out. I'm running a 14-yard comeback. It's one, two, three, snap one, two, and I'm driving out. And everything, all your outside routes, for the most part, should be counted off steps. Those are your musical notes that you build to, to create your song. Like, I really do think route running is so rhythmic, bro. If you tell me that you're running an 18-yard comeback, and I know it's your fifth outside false accelerate, I can close my eyes and tell you if it's a good route or not based on the rhythm. Because I know what a good comeback sounds like. It's violent steps. You hear the one, two, three, four, drop one, two, three. Like, all great routes share the same rhythm. All right, so we're going to start off here. This is Rutgers back in 2014 when I was coaching the Rutgers. And, and this is when we first introduced the break points to them and kind of our entire system of teaching wide receiver play. And you can see we're just walking through it here, right? They're jogging through it. Um, and this is the first step of building a rhythm. We're not worried about getting to a certain depth. We're worried about working on the rhythm of how to run a hitch, drop pop on your second inside step, right? So watch them jog through it. One, drop pop. Right, just building that rhythm and building that familiarity with the footwork. One drop pop on that second inside step. All right, and as you build familiarity with that with that footwork and it becomes second nature, you, the the footwork is designed to get you to the proper depth. But you don't need to think about getting there. All you need to think about is maximizing every step, maximizing your route for what it's worth. When we start to ask receivers to think in steps versus yards, that allows them to build a rhythm and focus on what's important, not, not worry about getting to a certain depth. And you're going to see all these examples. And just a routes on air clip, but does he look like he's getting to a certain yardage? No, he's worried about his steps. He's worried about selling vertical. He's worried about coming off the ball hard keeping his head down, keeping his pads low than a sudden break point. Like he, he's worried about getting open, not getting to a certain depth. Here's Odell Beckham. Does he look like he's worried about getting to a certain yardage or is he worried about keeping his stride open, keeping a good even tempo and then sudden drop pop? Like same type of thing, right? His head's not down. He's not looking at where he's got to go. He's trusting his feet. Here's Jawan Winfrey in the NFL PA game practices. Uh, just a one-on-one -on -one rep. Again, look at how nothing. Look at how his stride length doesn't change. His pad level doesn't change. Everything about this is selling vertical, and he's just trusting the rhythm of a third inside stop route. Right, drop pop on your third inside step. Now, if you want to get to a stop, which is nine yards, second inside step for a hitch, third inside step for a stop. Still the same break point, and you build that rhythm, and you can just trust your feet and allow all the reps you've accumulated to play out into a successful route. All right, now the other way of running a hitch is using a trigger step on your outside foot. So here's Mohamed Sanu showing you an example of that trigger step on your outside foot. So now second outside, and it's snap one, two, right? Slightly less efficient. You're taking an extra step here, but a lot of players just feel like they're, they're more explosive and they can become more threatening to the DB uh, this way with that trigger step. And the trigger step is used in a lot of other routes as well. Here's now fourth outside trigger step for a 12-yard stop. Right Again, look at his body language. Does he look like he's trying to get to a certain depth? Or does he have his head down running, trying to sell vertical, trusting a rhythm that he's built in practice by counting steps? Right, It's all about rhythm. One, two, three, snap one, two. Right, That's, a, that's rhythmic. That becomes second nature when you do it over and over and over again. I don't care about the yardage as much. Right, If you're open on time and you end up at 13 or 12, we're going to be able to adjust and make that catch. I need you to be open. And the only way that you can get open is if you're thinking about the right things, not thinking about yardage. All right, here's Christian Dremel, my little protege who goes to Rutgers. This was his first kind of time experimenting with the false accelerate. I don't love the break point, but just watch watch how steps times up to yards. Right, We're running a 12-yard curl, fourth outside step. He's going to trigger step. One, two, three, snap one, two. Right, he, he ends up at, I don't know, maybe 13 yards. And he's a 5'9 kid. Uh, but the depth isn't as important because he's running back to the ball. And he's going to catch it right there at 11 yards. 
right? Like it's the timing. It's are you open and ready to receive the football when the quarterback's ready to throw it to you? It's about timing. All right, here's Richie James, the infamous false accelerate break point at the top of this comeback. All right, that, watch how his, the rhythm he builds up by counting steps while he was you know, learning to run a comeback the proper way. It ends up playing out here even after the press release, right? So he takes this little, little hop release and runs outside. Watch once he gets vertical, okay? A typical 14 yard comeback is a false accelerate on your fourth inside step. Once he gets vertical after the release, that same rhythm is gonna apply because it's become second nature to him. Watch, finish the release, one, two, three, snap one, two. Even when he finishes release, once he starts to go vertical, that rhythm comes back into play and it becomes second nature to him again. He's gonna false accelerate on his fourth in inside step. One, two, three, snap one, two. All right, he ends up getting to what, 16 yards? And maybe this is a 14 yard comeback? I don't, I think the quarterback would rather throw to a guy who is like this, wide open by six yards, than a guy who's going into his break point timidly and, and slowing himself down to get to a certain depth to appease the coach. This is what I'm talking about. This is a prime example. Richie James could not attack this break point this way if he was worried about a certain yardage, right? He's attacking it this way because he's not worried about yardage. He's worried about his rhythm. He's worried about getting open. All right, here we are again, walking through the speed cut now, right? Speed cut on your second inside step. As we walk through, we're not going to get the depth we would when we're jogging, but you can see how they're just building this rhythm. Two full revolutions on that second inside step. We're going to speed cut to the sideline, break, drive, line, and round the corner. And now here it is playing out full speed. Second inside, speed cut. One, speed cut break, drive, line, round the corner, right? All you're worried about is opening that stride, selling vertical, and making the DB think you're gonna run by him, then you're snapping it off suddenly, and it's a timing route. All right, here's examples. Now you wanna run a 12-yard a speed cut, third inside speed cut now. One, two, speed cut on your third inside, right? And again, talking about the break point, we wanna break, drive, line. Break on that inside step, drive to get around the corner, line means we're friendly on a line right now, right? Break on that inside step, that changes direction drive to round the corner and then line gets you friendly break drive line you don't want to lose any speed okay the key here is not over exaggerating the break step like some of these guys are doing i don't need you to dip down a ton i want it to be smooth i want it to be seamless and you must keep your arms pumping throughout this break point keep your arms pumping to pull yourself through the cut and drive through the cut we cannot lose any speed so if we want our legs to keep moving fast we must keep our arms in that same rhythm it's a good job to hear by juju you see that's pretty smooth All right, now we're working on curl routes, right? This is when we were teaching the tight break, drop one, two, three. It's used for deeper curls, deeper comebacks in the NFL, but also a way to get in and out of a curl in four steps, which, you know, for some high school kids, that might be, this might be the appropriate way to do it. But we're just tight breaking on our third inside step. One, two, drop one, two, three, right? And again, just jogging through it, building that rhythm, understanding what that feels like. They're only getting to about seven yards, but they know that when they sprint it, they're gonna get to their 12 yards. And your third inside tight break, that's a 12 yard curl. One, two, drop one, two, three, come running out of it. Right now, here it is in real time. Drop one, two, three, come running out of it. And you see what happens when you attack it, right? He's not worried about depth. Again, he might get the 13 yards there, Juwan, but he's worried about attacking the break point. He's worried about selling vertical and he's worried about pounding his feet into the ground with a break point that's been a practice multiple times. Every step counts. That's why we teach every step. That's why we count every step. Right here's Vincent Jackson running a 14 yard comeback. One, two, three, drop one, two, three. The reason why you know he's not worried about yardage is because his stride length is staying the same, right? Because he's got a rhythm, he's got timing, he can stay, he's not looking down, he's not looking to get to a depth, he's trusting his feet, he's relying on a rhythm that he's practiced over and over again. All right, and the last one being uh, the speed drop break point and being like a dig route. This is a 16 yard dig route and it's a speed drop on your fourth inside step. Drop, break, drive, line. So let's see it. One, two, three, drop, break, drive line. Right, again, counting steps, trusting that rhythm. And now this combines a square break with a speed cut. It allows you to round that corner a little bit tighter than you would a speed cut. And most importantly, it allows you to have much more body control. Because oftentimes when we're running dig routes, we're running into linebackers, there's safeties there, there's hole players we gotta look out for, the ball might be thrown behind us. We have to have the body control to adjust to those things. That's why the speed drop and sinking your hips a little bit before you round the corner really helps you on those routes. 
All right, now here we go talking about a square break. Square breaks are break points where oftentimes you're not gonna count steps, okay? These underneath quick game type of routes like this, a lot of times it's gonna be based on the leverage and location of the defender, and you want to attack him, get on his toes, and then break in or out, whether it's an out-breaking square break or in-breaking, okay? But if you were just running the typical five to six yard shin route, short in route, uh, from the outside, it would be your second inside square break, right? Same steps as a hitch route, because that's a six yard hitch. Instead of stopping right there, you're gonna drop break line to burst inside. Really drop in the direction you wanna go, violent break step, and that line step has to be out in front of you, and that gets you on a line friendly right now. Hold up, brother, let me get this thing straight. Can't just be another random rapper with a mixtape. I just went and put another beat inside a pine box. I just went and took another trip way out to Biscay. I love Miami because they always treat me so well. They used to see me nowhere. I used to pull them by saying I run for the team. Now they running their hands through my head. Yeah, they used to never want to see my town. I, I, I got them coming to the east side now. Where they at? In the city where I reside now. When they move a little weight, let the D line. Now, run a track or run it back. Gotta keep it moving, never run it back. Never. We running the game and they running laps. That's another story for another track. See, from the sidelines, we gotta hustle cause we gotta eat. From the sidelines, we got some goals that we still gotta reach. Yeah. Reach. Yeah. Stop. Stop.